getting ready for a pretty talkative week this week because I have a lot of workshops and a lot of meetings. It's gonna be a lot of talking, I think. And I ended up actually having to work on the weekend because I just needed more time to prepare. So yesterday was Sunday and I ended up working a lot on this workshop that I have to run today and also going to my parents' house to celebrate my brother's lunar calendar birthday. So my family celebrates both the lunar calendar and the regular calendar and we don't do presents for both of them. We really don't do presents at all. As we've gotten older, it's really just been eating together and like having a nice dinner. And for the lunar calendar birthday, we end up eating noodles. So we had sajang mean. It's really, really good the way that my family makes it to the point where all of us like don't talk for like 10 minutes because we're too busy eating. But yeah, like I know it's not the best to work on the weekend, but sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. I'd rather work on the weekend and be prepared for my workshop than not working on the weekend and just going in there really anxious and like really stressed out because I feel I'm prepared. So this morning I'm gonna work on preparing for the workshop that I have this afternoon and we also have a stock options kind of meeting or info session that my company is running and I have that right after. I'm just gonna finish out my makeup here first and then we can get started. In my last vlog, I showed you guys that I wanted to work on a course from IDEOU and I sent an email to my company hoping that they would accept my training request. So shortly after, they ended up accepting it and I've been working on the course for about two weeks now. I've been really enjoying it so far and I plan to also make a review video once I finish the course. But I'm in my second week so far and this week we are learning about choreographing a meeting. So my assignment is to facilitate a workshop focused on either divergence or convergence. So in UX, we have something called divergence and convergence. Divergence is when you are creating choices. So you're getting a lot of different perspectives and doing a discovery so that you can hopefully understand what problem you're trying to solve better. And convergence is all about making choices. So I used to think that convergence was all about eliminating choices and then like narrowing it down onto like one thing that you really want to focus on, but actually it's about building and combining these ideas that you created in divergence and making them into like the super idea that you might not have been able to come up with if you had only looked down like one path or one perspective. So in the workshop today, I am going to be facilitating a convergence workshop. The UX team in my company this year has started a lot of cool initiatives so that we can promote user experience in our company and hopefully grow our design maturity, which is like our big overarching goal for 2022. We have a lot of ideas and a lot of momentum and a lot of energy, so I just want to create a convergence workshop so that we know how to focus that energy. And yesterday I ended up trying to strategize a lot of what I think this workshop should look like and this morning I'm going to continue doing so up until the workshop is actually going to happen. I really like doing stuff like this because I love thinking about design strategy and how to facilitate workshops. So let's get going. So I already have a lot of the workshop already prepared, but I want to spend a little bit of time talking about how I plan and prepare for workshops that I have to facilitate. I usually start with a goal for the workshop and then I'll try to create a story where I think of the participants as the hero. Then I'll start brainstorming what kind of environment they are in, what kind of tools or tutorials they might need to feel comfortable, what their personality is like, and how would I account for them if they were having a bad day. Then I run the workshop over and over my head trying to anticipate any questions, awkward silences, or blockers and how I might resolve them during the workshop. So it doesn't matter how many times I've done a workshop or how much I've prepared, always like five minutes before I get like a stomach ache and then I just feel kind of awful right before it starts. But I don't know, it's like, it's always that those nerves that you get. So yeah. Mm -hmm. 
so whenever I run a workshop, I always have my laptop in front of me and I keep my camera on and my microphone on as well. So I can add those like little like nods or I can do the mm -hmm, like that's interesting, like tell me more about it. Like that kind of stuff flows a bit more naturally and that's just kind of how I like it. So I have all my notes here and I also have notes on the back as well that I can reference to if I ever need to ask any questions. So I have listed down questions that I want to ask and also things that I want to say in case there's like an awkward kind of silence during the workshop. And the last thing that I do before I start the workshop is I make sure to turn my phone on silent and I also set my laptop to do not disturb for the hour just so like I don't get any slack notifications or there's no like messenger alerts or whatever that might distract myself from the workshop. So yeah, it's almost time to get started. I'm distressed. Hey everyone, welcome to our second design workshop. Thanks again for helping me out in my course. So today we are going to go over the agenda and then we're going to talk about our objectives for this workshop. At the very end of the workshop, we're going to go on to an onward section where we can discuss our next steps. So are there any questions before we start? Okay, thank you. Bye. Well, like I think online courses, like if you wanted to, you could probably finish it all in like a week or something, but I really don't think you're gonna get retain any information. So like there's always a reflection at the very end of every assignment. And you also get a lot of peer feedback where you have to read the assignments of other people who are also taking the course at the same time. And like, I feel like that has been very eye-opening and that's given me the best amount of feedback. Try to be strong and get us to lose, oh no. So there's two sets of analytics that we want to gather in this application. There's personal and there's general analytics. So general analytics, you can think of it as how many times was this button clicked? How many times was this page visited? It's very general in a sense, like you just get these numbers and they don't really give you any information about the user specifically. Um, when it comes to personal analytics, that's when we get more into the user. Hey guys, I keep getting into these back-to-back -back meetings, so I don't really have a break to talk to you guys about what I just did, but both of my meetings just finished, so I can talk to you guys now. I first had a one-on-one -on -one with my manager, and a lot of it was talking about my goals for 2022, and also sharing some details about my course that I'm taking. The other meeting that I just finished was a user analytics meeting. We're trying to figure out what kind of analytics we can capture from our applications, and if we need any extra permissions before we do so. So that was those two meetings and it's about 11 30 right now so almost lunchtime um, i'm pretty hungry which is great but after this um in the afternoon i have my backlog grooming meeting which is like a very boring kind of meeting i think i have talked to you guys about it before but it's just like figuring out how we can prioritize our tasks for the next sprint that backlog grooming meeting is at two o'clock uh, i feel like you guys are very close right now i'm a little I just need a little bit of room okay so that meeting is at two o'clock, which means before that, I want to work on a workshop that I have to prepare for for tomorrow. I'm not going to be facilitating the workshop. It's going to be done by another designer, but we do have some pre-work that I need to get finished so that I can come prepared to the meeting. The workshop tomorrow is for a UX assessment checklist. The idea behind it was actually something that we came up with last week and we're just working on it this week. So we have a UX checklist or audit checklist that was shared to us from another designer in the company 
company. I'm going to put a link in the description so that you guys can check it out yourself. Maybe it can help you with your project or your organization as well. The purpose of the checklist is to help with resourcing. Resourcing is like when project managers choose who they need on a project based on what skills or what experience they have. Sometimes for UX, because we don't work in a very design mature company, it's hard for them to know exactly who would be the best fit. So we're doing this assessment so that we can ask the right questions and get the PMs to fill out a form so that after they fill out the form, we can look at it and be like, oh, well, this person who works on this project needs to have this particular skill set. That's all supposed to help with resourcing. So I'm gonna work on that today. The one that I chose was solutions because I actually chose the last one that was left. So it's a little bit of a big one, but I'm gonna work on it before the backlog grooming meeting and hopefully have it done for tomorrow. So I ended up with solutions in the checklist. So the first one for creating solutions or plans of actions, I did a checkbox and this one is for the PM to talk about what the designer working on the project would be responsible for. the fitness challenge start okay but do all of our avatars have to be from naruto Today is one of those quieter days that I really appreciate, especially when I can feel that my social battery is draining. During these times when I am feeling a bit drained, I turn my camera off for the whole day, even if I have meetings. I realize that after working for a couple years remotely, I'm actually like very stressed out when the camera's on. I don't know, when I'm in a meeting, like I really wanna focus on what the person is saying and giving my attention to that but then i feel like when i have the camera on i get very distracted and it also creates a lot of stress for me so i feel like especially on days like today where it's pretty quiet i like to keep my camera off i know it's not very good when it comes to building relationships but this is something that I've recognized that I need and it's a boundary that I'm willing to stand up for. That being said, my only meeting today is with one of our salespeople. So this is really, really good actually because they're quite talkative and it makes it really easy for me because I'd much rather listen on days like today anyway. So basically our salespeople go to our different clients and try to pitch our application to them. It's a lot of meetings. And since I have my own internal meetings with the team, I don't get to go to a lot of these sales meetings. So that's why we have this bi-weekly meeting set up so that I can get any of the feedback from clients and then bring it up in our backlog grooming sessions that you saw Tuesday and yesterday. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. For the majority of the day though, I do want to spend time working on my workshop that I have to facilitate tomorrow. I'm going to be facilitating a UI workshop at 8 in the morning tomorrow, which is fine. I mean, sometimes it happens because of different time zones and it just happened to be the time where everyone is like ready or has time available in their calendar. We really want to get this done sooner than later, so that's just kind of what ended up happening. Since it's so early though, it means that I don't have the energy or the time to wake up early and prep, so I'm gonna do a lot of my prep work today. Basically, the workshop is thinking about creating a user journey map for this application. We wanna see how far into the journey we can go confidently in, and then also surface any questions that we might have that we can bring up. So that's the plan. I have my coffee, let's go. your time and attention won't you give some of it to me i've been lonely lately i've been feeling neglected 
I always feel that if I prep too early for a workshop, then I'm going to forget about it. So I always have to prep like right up until the very last minute. Since I can't really do that for this particular workshop because it's happening so early, I'm going to do as much prep as I possibly can today. A lot of this stems from how I feel about my ability as a designer. Whenever people ask me how many years of experience I have, I've, I've always felt a bit embarrassed by it because as a UX designer, I have two, almost three years of experience. Especially at the beginning when people would ask me, I would actually pack on the years that I had as a software developer just to make it sound a bit better, even though it still never really felt like enough. And I think it makes me feel like I'm a fraud or I don't know, it just makes me feel very insecure because I feel like I don't have that many actual years of experience with UX in my title. So being a senior, like I do feel like people think I'm capable, but it always makes me worried because if I mess up, there's like this voice in the back of my head that makes me think people are gonna say, oh, well, she's not ready or she doesn't deserve that title or I don't know, like she got lucky and that's, that's why she's at the point that she is. So I always feel like I have to prepare to the point of almost over preparing in order to make myself feel secure before I run a workshop. Um, for the workshop tomorrow, we do have everything set up already. And what I'm gonna do is think about how the workshop is going to go and come up with any questions that I can ask in case there are any awkward silences or moments where we feel blocked. Oh yeah, and also like another quick tip when it comes to Fig Jam and workshop facilitation, make sure you lock all of your components so that they don't move, especially if you're working with people who are not so familiar with Fig Jam. Like I've definitely been in situations or workshops where a participant ends up deleting a piece of text or moving a line so that our whole grid system is like messed up or something. So in order to avoid that, all you have to do is select whatever you want to lock and then right click and then select lock or unlock and then that item should be locked so that it can't be moved during the workshop. Just a little tip from experience. Won't you let me in? So My box set is here! So I am down. so so happy that this finally came in the mail. If you guys haven't noticed, I'm actually a very big fan of One Piece, so I'm very happy to be adding this to my collection. Cause when you spend your time with me, you're speaking my love So in today's workshop, I'm going to go over the agenda and then we'll see if there's any questions afterwards. So the first thing we're going to do is start off with a very quick Fig Jam tutorial. We just finished the workshop. I am really happy with how it went. I am so sleepy right now, but I'm like, it was so worth it, even though it was so early in the morning, because I feel like we got a lot of really good insights and I'm just, I don't know, whenever a workshop goes really well, I feel so like energized as an introvert. Like it feels so satisfying that like we all can come to a consensus and move forward together. So that feels really good. It's one of those weird instances where I feel energized after talking to people as an introvert. So I have about an hour before my next meeting and that is a meeting with a client that we're actually talking to about this project. We're not gonna talk about what we just did in the workshop, but it's more of a, they show us what their system currently looks like and we can ask questions. It's really nice to end off the week in a passive meeting so I don't have to be like the one facilitating and I can kind of just take it easy and ask questions as they come up. my workshops my week is done i'm done all of my meetings Ugh. i am so so happy 
Uh, this week was definitely one of my more talkative weeks and I definitely felt it as I was going from Wednesday to Thursday So I'm just really happy that it's over and I get to spend the weekend relaxing a little bit and kind of just like resting up So I'm just really hoping that the day stays quiet now and I'm gonna spend a little bit of time Journaling through my thoughts of this whole entire week after work is done today We're going over to my parents' house because it's my brother's actual birthday today And we're gonna be going there to celebrate. That's pretty much it for for this video i just want to say thank you guys for watching i know there are actually like a lot of new people on my channel and watching me so i'm just happy and i just want to say hi um thanks for watching my channel for watching my video and just liking and relating to my week as a ux designer so yeah thank you so much i will see you guys in the next video bye Perfect date starts in a small cafe There's hearts everywhere cause it's Valentine's Day We order up waffles to share the whole plate Sit by the window and start to debate There's nobody else I'd rather spend my everyday with I think it's sweet she sometimes winks when she laughs I like the way she dances, babe